Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind here, back again with another video, and um, here's one from my TBR list that I've recently finished. Uh, it's Beach House by R.L. Stein in the Point Horror series. The little strap line there is Don't Go Near the Water. Iconic, classic uh, front cover there, pure nostalgia. And, um, you know, I'm reading a few of these this summer. I only read a few Point Horror when I was younger. Um, I didn't read Point Crime, Point Romance that I can remember. Definitely borrowed this off somebody, but you know, as a kid, probably an older friend or a cousin, I don't really know, but um, I remember reading this as a kid, although it, it felt like quite a new reading experience, reading it now, sort of 20 years later, perhaps, probably more like 25 years later. First published in 1992, and I probably picked it up late 90s, I'd say. Um, I probably read it around the age of about 10, um, although I'd say I'd, I, I, I think these are aimed at older children than 10. Um, but yeah, I certainly have vague memories of it. And it's a fantastic summer spook, really, if I'm honest. Um, there's more like it that I'm going to be reading, and this sort of kicked things off, really. Um, I really, really enjoyed it this time around. And um, like I say, it's it's perfect for this time of year, a summer read, a beach read. Um, fantastic. Again, very nostalgic, late 80s, early 90s feel and aesthetic and setting and references and things it's a real time capsule um books like this i feel so it says swim sunbathe or die uh, almost 40 years ago in the in the swinging summer of 56 amy ronnie maria and stuart hung out at the beach for days filled with sun and laughter but a killer began to stalk them one by one a killer who never left a clue who disappeared as completely as a footprint in the sand now, on those same golden sands, Ashley, Ross, Lucy and Kip innocently enjoy the same things. Then, without warning, history begins to repeat itself. Who is this monster who won't let them have their place in the sun? Who has decided to hold on to his place, whatever the cost? And this book cost £2.99 uh, back in 1992. So, it's um, we've got a, a murder on the beach. We've got this murderous kind of rampage that's affecting these young lives. And it's a real whodunit, basically. Um... Again, as the blurb illustrates there, we kind of straddle, we, we jump between two eras from the 50s and the early 90s. And um, yeah, I think the book is, a, you know, it's written 1991, 92, and I believe that's when it's set. Um, it, it, I thought, when I first read it, I thought that the opening chapter, opening couple of chapters that involve a character named Buddy, um, I thought those chapters were a sort of prologue. I didn't think... It continue, I didn't think we jumped back to it and so I thought it served its purpose and I thought Buddy's influence would resonate throughout the decade so I was a bit jolted and a bit surprised when we headed back to the 50s probably six or seven chapters in and we, we jumped backwards and forwards until those two timelines converge. Um, there might be spoilers in this video if you're looking to read it um, I'd, I'd head away now um, and go and read it but it's it's a fantastic book. Yeah so um Buddy, this character, this mysterious character, they're out swimming at the sea. He's kind of teased and bullied. While he's out at sea, his clothes are taken. So he's, you know, floundering around naked in the sea. And he's, he's the, the butt of everyone's joke. And he seeks revenge. Um, and he gets it. And early on in this book, we think we, we, we see Maria um, stabbed in a sort of frenzy out at sea, out in the depths. And left for shark food. Um, and presumably she dies. And uh, we're left mourning her loss and fearing for the other's safety um we know what happened to maria um and like i say she, we assume that she's taken by the sharks uh, left for dead in the sea left as fish as fish food as shark as shark food and we hop into the 90s and we've got a new crowd of kids laying on their coca-cola beach towels their mtv beach towels that are referenced a few times dating this book quite nicely it's, it feels like a real nostalgia trip um an innocent time perhaps but these aren't innocent times they're being stalked and people go missing in these mysterious circumstances and the reader is left kind of guessing suspecting who is responsible for this i think the thing i had the most fun with with this book was trying to second guess trying to work out what buddy's influence was across the decades how can this murderer from the 50s this dark mysterious figure who lived in this strange abandoned dark beach house how can his influence affect the kids in the 90s? I was thinking, is he? did he have a son? Is it, we, we, we meet a new character um, called Brad, and I wondered, is he Buddy's son, or is it a relative of some description? Or 
that they both had the same kind of influence or something. You know, it was it was um, I was trying to question that, and although I knew, I felt I knew the link between them. I, I had fun kind of saying, okay, it's likely that I know how these books work, and it's it's likely A, but but what if it was B or C? That was a lot of fun trying to guess perhaps the links, um, if not the obvious one. Uh, what was it? And the ending isn't obvious for me. Um, those that have read it, I would love to know your thoughts on the ending. Perhaps I'll save the spoilers in the video and, you know, we can we can talk in the comments. But I I knew. So when characters go into a, into a closet or into a cupboard, a wardrobe towards the end of the video, and I kind of knew, I kind of felt that when they came out of that closet, it wouldn't be the year they kind of thought it was or something like that. And I wasn't a million miles off. That closet does serve that kind of purpose, but an unusual ending for a, for a traditional sort of slasher kind of book, an unusual element at the very end uh, to to explain and to to justify and reveal all of all of what's been happening and how how Buddy's influence kind of spanned decades. I thought it was an unusual one, a little bit lying the witch in the wardrobe um, in some ways. Now, I think the last thing I really want to say is how much I love this in its context, in its isolation. I teach kids and I don't know if they'd get a kick out of this. They would from a sense of, if they love horror and thriller and slasher kind of gore stuff, it's not gory, but if they like these being stalked by murderers kind of books, um, it's at the lower end of that scale. That makes it sound, you know, horrendous. It's not, it's not American Horror Story levels of, you know, but it's, it is teens being stalked by, a, by an unknown killer. Um, I don't think, I don't, I wonder, I'll ask them, but I don't think modern kids would get such a kick out of this. And what I really, really had to avoid and what I want to avoid and what I'd, I'd encourage people to avoid is to apply a sort of modern lens on this book. I found myself doing it. For example, in my notes, I wrote things like that the boy's behavior in the book is quite predatory. Uh, they, they, they constantly want to get somebody alone. They're grabbing girls, they're picking them up and running away with them. They're, they're physically in control at all times. And it leaves our protagonist, Ashley, um, in a really vulnerable situation. So that's the first thing we could start to cr criticize, you know, rightly or wrongly. It's, it feels, these boys feel like a rough kind of crowd of aggressive, macho, sexually predatory, questioning their intentions vibes the whole way through um and they lack i think redeeming qualities in many ways um the hero at the end you know it, anyway i'm rambling but the other thing i think i want to say is about ashley's behavior and the situations she puts herself in either willingly or unknowingly or unwittingly whatever it might be um her decision making i think she's designed to be a, a not an overly likable protagonist i don't I think she's very flawed. I think she's young, um, but her decision making, whether it comes down to jealousy or trying to evoke a jealous reaction, uh, this will show him, oh, if he wants a show, he'll really get one now and she'll kiss someone. And it feels very juvenile, I suppose, but also I, ju I just, I, I wonder if as many kids behave like this nowadays, maybe I'm, I don't know. Um, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on that. I don't want to apply any sort of modern woke lens that's not me and i i, I what, what does that serve we know it's a book from the 90s but you find yourself thinking would, would would new readers vibe with this i don't know i don't know is the answer to that um so anyway i could talk more i could talk i won't i won't but i've really enjoyed talking about it guys and i hope you enjoyed this video and um, there'll be more like it across the summer a sort of summer of spooks kind of vibe I'm bang in the middle of another horror book as we speak, and I've got more from R.L. Stein lined up as well. They're, they're fun to talk about, and uh, yeah, I promise to talk about them as they are as a, as a, as a piece of uh, 90s teen horror. Um, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Do click like, and uh, if you're new here and you got this far, thank you so much, and I really hope it earns your subscription. Uh, do leave me a comment below. Um, I love reading your comments. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Take care.